many times in uh, businesses in international businesses and even in generally in life uh, you would need uh, some type of feedback some type of suggestion from other people who might be more knowledgeable than you are um, you can call it like your advisors you can call them your mentors your group of friends if you want to call them whatever you want to call them but every now and then you will be either trying to take some advice from someone who you think maybe knows more than what you know they have maybe more experience in international markets and then you ask them questions like some of the friends were asking me a while ago that um, wh what do you do when you prepare to teach internationally how do you understand their cultures how do you anticipate what are the things how you should go about your business in international markets all of those things so that was what was that that was like taking advice receiving advice and but many times you would be giving advice also to um, other people your friends may be asking you something what should i do what do you think um, your younger siblings are asking you something whatever you are at at uv and some new people who want to come to uv they ask you should we come and or should we not come there <laughs> why we should come and why do you think we should not go there and all of those things so this is part of this is part of learning especially if you want to think it from the lens of international business international markets you if you think that you know it all and you won't need anyone's advice and uh, you just know everything i don't think that is a good mindset uh, that is not how anyone should be thinking because there is there are all, always people more knowledgeable about different markets which you don't have exposure to so you would be taking their their advice if you are strictly thinking about international business management but outside of that also even if you are not thinking about international business management and the idea of the live discussions which i want to have with you is not just just to limit to international business management but wherever you go whatever you do uh, that is the sentiment which i carry uh, which makes you come live which makes me come live and talk to you guys about these things so this thing which i have selected is advice so how to take it what are the things which we should keep in mind when we are you know selecting a mentor for example or taking someone's opinion and all those type of things what is the right mechanism to give feedback to give advice to other people how should we go about it all of those things we would like to cover in next one hour this is a very fascinating article and beautifully written and it can be for some people when you will be reading it in detail it can be boring because the examples are maybe coming from us markets and they might not be as relatable as people who are exposed to us market but for that i would say that you don't just stick to the examples which are given in the articles you think of your own examples you bring in your own experiences you know in all of that so with that background i would like to start looking at some of the major things uh, in the in the in the article one thing i really want to mention here that reflect in your own life who are the people you take advice from like currently like or in the past you would see that you are taking advice from your friends you would see you are taking advice from your parents your colleagues people who are around you you are comfortable with and all of those things and uh, whatever they say it is going to give make some type of influence on you and uh, rightly so also because you are emotionally connected with them you are thinking that my best interest is in the heart and head of my parents so whatever they are going to advise me that would be best advice for me uh, i want to take a moment to reflect a little bit on this point which i just made and i'm not debating that they don't have our best interest in their heart and in their head uh, of course they have our parents our friends it's not a good friend if they don't have our best interest in our uh, in their in their heart but uh, don't confuse best interest from the thing that they will also be able to give you best advice also um, 
they everyone gives you advice from uh, the way they have spent their life from their experience from the way they are coming from uh, how they view thing, things and you 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 have seen in your families that uh, there are brothers sisters and not everyone agree on each topic you might disagree on some things which which your parents are saying maybe the way they think is different than how you think then if that is true and you have experienced that uh, and of course all of us have experienced that that we are thinking on a certain level and our loved ones are thinking on a certain level then how do you think that they will be able to give you advice which will fit which will be a good fit for the way you think for your personality because personalities are very different um, so the idea here underlying idea is that you take advice but when you are implementing it you take the ownership for that for example just before starting the recording i gave some advice to you guys um, Jod asked me a couple of things. Regina made some comments, and I gave my suggestion, feedback, advice, whatever you want to call it. Now I gave it from the way I look at things. So uh, Jod or Regina or anyone should not get influenced from uh, my personality when they are selecting my advice or putting my advice as it is in their lives that should not be the case so they should take my advice but then see that which part of my advice fits in their lives so the point is that you can take the advice from anyone you want or you think is capable of giving you a good advice but when you are putting it in your life you need to take ownership of that now you have decided to take that advice next day you cannot come and you tell the advisor that oh because you made me this give me this advice i did this no that is not how it should be you take advice and then you have your own brain you have your own life experiences and why you are taking just one advice you should take multiple advice multiple feedbacks and from there you decide what you want to do and what you don't want to do uh, I think that is that is an interesting thing to reflect on. But generally, we don't do do it. We our friends say something and then we do it. Generally speaking, because they are our friends, it's a relationship, and we say, all right, it must have good intention in my in their heart. And then many times we realize after a period of time that uh, it was a it was a it can be what I'm trying to say. It can be best advice, but it is not fit for your personality. It can be best advice, but it is not for you. So who is going to decide that if this advice is for you or not? It is you who is going to decide. So taking ownership of the decision making, that is still you owe the uh, burden, if I can call it, although although it is not a burden, but <laughs> if I can call it, you, you have to uh, take ownership of that. But having said that, there is an art of receiving advice and there is an art of giving the advice there are some things which the advisor need to do some things which advisee needs to do uh, some things that mentor needs to do some things which mentee needs to do but it is not something that things will happen automatically you need to think about these things so this is what this article is about i hope all of us learn uh, a thing or two from from this uh, seeking and giving advice are central to effective leadership and decision making so the idea is that you cannot be effective leader you cannot be a good decision maker if you are not someone who is willing to listen to different ideas then you would be just limited to what your head is telling you uh, but to and to do great things innovation uh, finding new products for international markets and whatever you want to think you need different points of views and those type of things so um, being effective leader and being good decision maker go hand in hand with the with your ability to give and receive advice 
yet managers seldom view them as practical skills they can learn and improve i don't view it like that receiving guidance is often seen as the passive consumption of wisdom and advising is typically treated as a matter of good judgment you either have it or you don't rather than a competency to be mastered so the thing is that you are not like just it's not just good judgment you can you can really master it and stuff like that uh, when the exchange is done well people on both sides of the table benefit those who are truly open to guidance and not just looking for validation develop better solutions to problems than they would have on their own they add nuance and texture to their thinking and research shows they can overcome cognitive biases self serving rationals and other flaws in their logic uh, this is what happens when we are taking advice from from uh, like friends and families and we think and rightfully we are thinking that they are going to give us good advice but that is a cognitive bias uh, let me clarify that for example you buy a beautiful new car and you love your brothers sisters family members but if they don't know how to drive a car are you going to give them your car uh, you love them yes yeah are you going to let them drive when you know they don't know much about driving car they don't know they so you love them that is separate apartment but they don't know how to how to how to drive car you are not going to give them if you will give them you, they are going to put trouble on the car they are going to put trouble on themselves they going to put trouble on the road anything can happen and uh, who is responsible it is you who is responsible same way you, from your loved ones you are taking advice you are taking suggestions do they know about that thing or not you take advice from your mummy and mummy loves you that is fine no one is debating that there is no other person who can love you more not your girlfriend not your boyfriend boyfriend the way i am thinking maybe maybe in, maybe in short run in the honeymoon period you know but nothing beats a uh, 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 love of parents uh, um, not everyone but generally speaking that is the sentiment across cultures that nothing beats the love of uh, parents uh, so but if they don't know much about uh, the question you are trying to answer then their advice is maybe not maybe not something which you would want to implement uh, because they have your best interest in their heart but maybe they don't know about that that field that thing so those are the cognitive biases self serving nationals other flaws many other flaws in the lo logic if the more you get interested in for example psychology and those type of things you would have like you know those those biases coming like like the way i speak for example you would have a certain bias towards me either just by listening to my voice you are liking it or you are disliking it it is automatically happening you can look in your head right now right now in your head either you are liking my voice or you are disliking my voice the way i am saying the things you are liking them or this what is that it is somewhere linked with your cognitive biases uh, you it, it, it would be good to know about them uh, and cognitive is simple words is mind the biases we hold, held we keep in our mind that is what cognitive biases so don't get worried about the terminologies are these who it seems someone is commenting uh, no i don't know why jord said no i don't know but uh, i think she was saying referring to the car driving yes you would not give your car to drive good those who give advice effectively wield soft influence they shape important decisions while empo empowering others to act and engage listeners as engaged lis listeners they can also learn a lot from the problems that people bring them uh, and the rule of reciprocity is a powerful binding force uh, providing expert advice often creates an implicit debt that recipients will want to uh, repay uh, think about these things this is very very interesting i really enjoyed reading this one uh, but advice seekers and givers must are significant hurdles such as deeply ingrained tendency to prefer their own opinion 
So as I was giving some advice to Jord uh, before the recording started, um, she might take some of the advice, but then she would have her own opinions also. And it is very hard to let go of your own opinions because they are our own. Uh, we don't like our opinions to be challenged. Uh, for example, when we spoke about mentorship, uh, George said that uh, it's generally very expensive and uh, that is her opinion. But then I said some things and uh, maybe she agreed in the chat, but we don't really know if she really agrees. Because if she really thinks that uh, mentors are expensive, and they are, of course, I'm not debating that they are not. But I was trying to talk about the value which you can generate from the 100 USD dollar or more. We don't know the price, but I'm just saying that whatever opinion Jode holds in her in her head, for me to just change it by saying few things, that is not how it happens. Jode will change her opinion. Uh, uh, she will, uh, but when she wants to change her opinion. Not because I'm just saying some things and she will say, okay, all right, this is my new opinion. That is not how it really happens in psychology and people who just force their opinion on other people and they say, do it like that and expect that they will start doing it like that. Uh, maybe one off case that would happen. Maybe when you are like in the honeymoon period of some romance and the other person is just saying yes to whatever you are saying, maybe that, but in the practicality of the things that is not sustainable, that is not viable because everyone have their own opinions. Irrespective of their merit and the fact that careful listening is hard, time consuming work is very beautiful, very nice. I'm really loving it, loving this. Uh, we always say listen to other people and but are we to be really listen to what other people are saying or we are thinking what our opinions are like I'm saying things what I want to say are you really listening to what I am saying right now are you really listening without looking at your own opinions I don't think so although I would want to but that's very hard you have your own opinion about all these things you have your own opinion about feedback and mentorship and advice and um, so what is going on in your head that openness in your head is there right now as I am speaking like okay let me see what the, this article says and what Tashfin has to add to this article uh, let me be open about whatever he says and I will just listen to what he's saying and then I will make some notes and then in the evening I will just think about these things and then I will take what what makes sense and I will just leave what don't make sense but at least one time at least one time i'm going to think about these things openly without keeping my opinions um, that we generally not do and by we i'm not telling you guys please i'm telling this to myself also <laughs> it's very hard to let go of our own opinions the way we think because that is what we are uh, uh, moving along on both sides it requires emotional intelligence self-awareness restraint diplomacy patience if you don't have these things uh, neither you can neither you can be good in taking advice nor you can be good in giving advice if you don't emotional intelligence if you are not self-aware if you are not diplomatic if you don't have patience then uh, then if you are not like if you are telling people do it like this uh, then it don't it's not going to be because the, the earlier conversation we had it was very interesting uh, in the chat and and so on uh, reflect reflect on that um, uh, Okay, the process can derail in many ways and getting it wrong can have damaging consequences, misunderstanding and frustration, the decisions, gridlock, subpar solution, frayed relationship, and everything is like, you know, not good with, with substantial cost to individuals and their uh, organizations. 
because these essential skills are assumed to emerge organically they are rarely taught uh, i really doubt that uh, in any of your course you spend some time on how to give feedback how to take feedback how to advise how to take an advisor how to take mentorship and then again you would see that you cannot grow without the support of other people from what you can but no one really spends time on that so that is again one reason to select this article and talk about this because you are going to definitely learn a thing or two from this but we have found that they can be learned and applied to great effect great effect these things can be learned so we have drawn on um, so they are giving some practical guidelines and stuff like that of course advice takes different forms in different circumstances uh, coaching and uh, mentoring uh, are covered extensively elsewhere so here we focus on situations that involve big risky emotionally charged decisions and then how to go about that that is what the sentiment of this section is uh, why this is harder than it looks why all of this giving and receiving advice why it is it is hard whether you are receiving or giving advice flawed logic and limited information complicate the process and logic is many times flawed not that uh, we are insane but it is just these type of things we are um, the many times the we are the logic of our decisions that that is kind of flawed for example you know my friend said this and i'm going to do this uh, and why are why will you do what your friend said because uh, he's my friend and uh, he loves me and uh, he's going to tell me what is good for me uh, so the 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 logic here is that because he is go your good friend what idea he is giving you is also good so on the surface of it it should be good but he is he and you are you he knows you but he does not really know you fully even you don't know you yourself fully if you ask me it is not many people know themselves fully <laughs> it's very hard to know yourself because think about it think about it uh, has this happened in your life that you did something and then after a while you said oh why did i do that i should not have done that so that that tells you that you don't know yourself because you did it and after a while you are saying why you did it so in your head you are thinking that you should not have done it but you did it so do you know yourself no you don't know you just know as much about yourself as big your experiences are if you have not been in an ex in an experience you you don't know what it who are you what you are going to do if you if you are a very brave person and you say oh if if some if some thief comes and he try to snatch something from me i'm gonna just kick him and i'm gonna slap him and do this and this that but if you have not done that these are just your th thoughts it's, it has very little to do with the real life when god forbid that situation will happen you don't know how you will react you might get uh, freezed I know about very brave girls who are courageous and so on. I'm sure you know. And when there was some attempt sexually on them or something like that, they report later on that it's just their bodies free froze and their mind froze and they did not know what to do. And they are perfectly fine girls. They are nothing is wrong with them. They are confident. They are everything. So what happened? They they thought that they will react and they will do this and that. But when the thing happened, they were not able to do it. Why is that? Why is that? Why these things happen with, with us? I'm not saying it, it's true for you. I'm making a generalized statement. Now, it's your job to look within and uh, see where is the flawed logic in your in your head and, and so on and try to try to remove it uh, if there is any flawed logic. And that is even the smartest people have have some type of flawed logic and the reason is obvious we are emotional beings we are emotionally connected with other people uh, 
uh, that is why sometimes you know a, there can be a very good decision maker who really knows the world and everything you know, when it comes to the matter of heart their decisions are very wrong and they are not able to make good decisions because it is a matter of heart so they are emotionally making decisions and their mind stops work i'm sure you have experienced those type of sentiments in your life yeah so what is what is that these are all that is under the category of flawed logic so uh, think about these things advice seekers must identify their blind spots yeah so i've made some comments on that recognize when and how to ask for guidance draw useful insight from the right people and overcome an inevitable defensiveness about their own ideas this is very important because you know i am saying things which which are which which i which i believe in and i'm sharing my thoughts you look look in your mind let's say that you hold a different opinion than me and that is perfectly fine you don't have to agree with the things which i am saying at all that is not the point but see are you being defensive about your own opinions or you are just listening to me with an open mind and not trying to defend your own opinions on these things which i am saying i you can see i have made some very controversial remarks about a couple of things just in the last 2 minutes they can be very controversial and you can hold your own opinion on those things so if you have a different opinion than the things which i mentioned then are you being defensive about your opinion and trying to defend them or you are just listening to me and then you will just reevaluate your procedure and then maybe you will stick to your position or maybe you will take a couple of things from mine that is how it should be but it is not like that people are very 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 defensive about what they believe what they think very defensive they form their personal identity from those things because they say i believe in that i believe in x i believe in y i believe in my friendship i believe in whatever you know they are believing in so you you must have belief what is the life if there is no belief system in that but the idea is about defensive are you like so defensive about your ideas that even when a good idea is given to you you close your eyes because you are so defensive about your idea because that is your that is the way you are brought up you are so defensive about you how you you won't be able to succeed in international markets as i was mentioning before the recording that flexibility is the thing there flexibility it's going to ask test your flexibility how even in life you know in life you should you should have your own opinion i am not saying that you know you should not have your own opinion but it is life is about you know being flexible you many times you have to adjust and other party is not adjusting you have to look at the long run many times and people who cannot adjust well and are, are not flexible they are not successful in international market and forget about international market they are not successful in their personal personal lives also it's just like they would be very lucky if they find people around them who are always agreeing to what they are saying <laughs> that does not necessarily happen maybe once in a while that can happen but yeah this flexibility and looking at the you know uh looking at the other people what they are saying why they are saying why they are advising you what they are advising what is the agenda and all of those things those are some things which uh, really needs uh, time and uh, effort to uh, think about uh, yes um uh, you may find it helpful to do a reality check of your behavior against uh, this list which we are going to quickly go through when you are seeking advice watch for these obstacles and what are those obstacles thinking you already have the answers if i am your advisor and you are asking me some question whatever that question is and you already have your own answers then that is not what should be you should be asking for you don't want advice you already have your own answers but many times people do that why do they do that why i'm sure you have done that also sometimes we are just looking for validation 
sometimes just validation it is like i think it like this what do you think and they won't tell what do you think they uh, they won't tell what i think like this they will just ask someone's opinion do you think that this uh this looks good on me and if, even if the person says no it does not look good good on good on you you will still wear that so what is that you did not you are taking you are not looking for advice you are asking for validation you are just checking if other people also think the way you are thinking yeah and what can be some of the drawbacks for that in international markets uh, you take people's opinion and then you are not doing anything on that uh, if very quickly people will know that it's not advice you are seeking you are seeking something else and then they will uh, they might just say the things which you want to hear they won't come and say speak their heart out to you and uh, what type of relationships you are going to build if people around you are unable to speak their mind because they know that you are going you have made up your minds already all the time yeah so thinking you already have the answers no never think you already have the answers don't think that that you already have the answers for everything be in the mindset of a learner yes you have some answers yes i am not saying that you don't know anything of course but you listen to other person with without being defensive just listen to what the other person is saying just listen and uh, reflect on that and from that you see what is happening yeah, that is i think very very important they have given some examples in the in this in this paragraph you are going to read it in your own time uh, choosing the wrong advisor that is i think sometimes knowingly sometimes not the cn maker stack the deck by turning to like minded advisors and that is why we take advice from our friends because friends are like minded generally speaking or they are going to look at your mood and advise you looking at that they not very rarely you going to find friends who are going to critique you like really critique you that jord what you did that night was absolutely wrong you should not have done that they not going to go that hard on jord they are friends and they are oh, yes yes you did it well yes he deserved it you did the right thing yes 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 most of the times yeah what is that is the wrong advisors will keep on doing same type of their you know how you will improve at least there should be someone who is telling you that you know you, you can't do it like that don't do it like that next time or why did you do that and make you reflect on that because if your friends tell you don't do it like that you would not stop doing it you will still do it because people don't stop when other people tell them people stop when they decide that they are not going to do something and that is the key point in the role of advisor instead of if i am your advisor in, i can always tell you that okay in international market do it like this you can do it like this do it like this and i can give you ideas but is that the right advice no that is that is not the right advice right advice is that i ask you questions which leads you to the conclusion which i want you to make yeah i ask you questions and you try to answer them and then you are reaching to the conclusions yourself so then you would have ownership you will say yes i thought about it and this question and then this and then this will happen okay i'm going to do it like this so you went into that process and so on yeah of course personality plays a lot of part in in advising if you are impressed by the personality or knowledge or wisdom whatever you want to call it from uh, from uh, from the advisor you might be so much influenced by the advisor that this tell you and you take it like that yes you can do that of course you can do that but if the advice or feedback does not work out and it fails please remember that you are responsible not your advisor because you you decided that in my situation it will work so that is why very important to think about choose, not choosing the wrong advisors just like i gave you that car example that will you give your car to the person who does not you can love them but they don't know how to drive will you give give it to them and you guys said no yeah so same way you that 
the person has that knowledge that acumen that understanding they have that or not yeah and then there are various ways to check it and and gauge it uh, and uh, so on what's what's more several field studies confirm that advice seekers are more receptive to guidance from friends or other likable people yeah though friendship accessibility and non-threatening personalities all impart high levels of comfort and trust they have no relationship no relationship yeah to the quality or thoughtfulness of the advice so friendships personalities families trust all of those things have no relationship with the quality or thoughtfulness of the advice yeah, no relationship but it is a flawed logic flawed logic that we think that our friends and rightfully i'm not trying to speak about your friends against your friends of course they are your friends and they have the good interest in their heart but then friendship is not linked with also being able to give the right advice and uh, and so on so you have to be this is this is what is called cognitive biases and those things we were talking about a while ago seekers oh, okay someone want to yes joe please go ahead someone raise their hand or something can i give an example please go ahead please i love when you guys speak i don't like to speak all the time please on your website you had a video that i think you're the lady who was an advisor for a businessman and she was mm -hmm. tasked with responsibility to find a task for them to do after a business meeting so mm -hmm. she had a friend who did cherry picking and she saw it be a fun idea but before she did um when she with that she called her lecturer who was versed in this area and you're mm. saying that after grown men have a meeting they don't want to pick berries and he mm. suggested that she they take them to a shooting range instead oh, so yes. she followed her lecture advice and they had they enjoyed themselves everybody was happy in the meeting was happy with that decision so yes. had she followed her friend advice she would not have Impressed. Yes. Very, very interesting. Very interesting. Thanks for that, Joe. Then I'm also relieved that you guys are looking at website and all the things which I've asked you because um, some colleagues were telling me that you know your class participants are not going to because you ask them to do different things. They they don't like to do so much reading and writing and so on. So I said, well, I'm relieved that you guys are looking at the videos thanks thanks very much seekers also and those of you who have not you know looked at that example go on the website and look for there are some postings for you to watch when you have time seekers also fail to think creatively enough about the expertise they need which field might bring valuable insight who has solved a similar problem before that's very important yeah any problem in life or in business or international business there is someone who has solved that problem before there is if you have not found those people then you are not looking much maybe you are not looking deep deeply there are like you are talking with Jode a while ago that you know she wants to go in international markets and have international experience and so on and one of the pointers we mentioned is that she finds some Jamaican friends people who live here and they have done, done similar type of things what is that they have gone through that process or find the other university where she want to go and find out are there any Jamaican uh, people there and who came from Jamaica yeah, that is those things are possible of course they are time consuming it takes time you will write emails not everyone is going to respond to those emails and you will get impatient and you will say this does not work well it works you lost you lost your patience it's always, you have to be patient about that and why are you thinking that everyone you write an email and everyone you ask help from they are going to be helpful if you are thinking that then it's a flawed logic it does not happen like that <laughs> you ask 10 people and maybe two are going to help you you write 100 emails and maybe you are going to get 
10 replies and from 10 nine people are going to say sorry and maybe one person is going to going to say yes how uh, so now i this summer i am told you guys that i would be teaching in spain and finland how many emails you think i i wrote in international markets it just happened just like that that i just asked one person and they say oh yes yes come 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 here no it don't happen like that very rarely it will happen. Many times you have to attempt and you should be open to failure and you fail many times and then you get success. Yeah, the same thing, thinking and uh, logic you have to think about on, on these lines as you are looking for the best fit. Whose knowledge is most relevant? Whose experience is the best fit? These are the things you would want to look at. And, but this is not easy. Yeah. Uh, so if you are thinking that all of this is hard, then you are thinking on the, in the right direction. This is hard. This is not. This is not easy. This is the heading here. Look at this. Why this is harder than it looks? <laughs> it might look easy that okay, I can do this, but because not every person is going to be as responsive responsive as you would want to, that alone is going to make things uh, very hard uh, for for. For, for you in the in the sense of finding advice and all of those things defining the prob problem properly uh, many times people are not defining the problems in a proper in the right way and uh, because they are speaking with the with the advisor or mentor and they give them some information but maybe that is not enough information uh, maybe the way they are explaining the problem, it is not worded correctly and there is a communication problem. Maybe there is a there is a there is a listening problem that uh, the the advisor is unable to listen between the lines and read between the lines what you are trying to say. And maybe there are some problems which you have identified as problems but the underlying problem is something else uh, it's just like a relationship you see relationship is not working and you see okay this is the reason but you don't know what is going on in the head of the other person even if they are telling you what is going on you still don't know because they are telling you in words not in experience they are experiencing it Think about this. When you tell me that you are in pain, I understand you, yes. But I understand you in words. I don't understand you in your experience. What do you really mean by pain? You might cry, you might have sleepless night, all of those things, yes. And I would say, okay, you are in, in deep distress, deep pain. <laughs> but only you know what type of pain, what is the experience? You have that experience. Other can empathize with you. So all of, because of all these uh, hurdles or obstacles, there is, uh, the problem is poorly defined. And so I, they are calling it, this is very interesting terminology. Please run a Google search on that. Uh, Max and Dolly have done some work on this uh, bounded awareness. You're, uh, you are aware, I am aware that you are in pain, but my awareness is bounded by a few things. And they are talking about cognitive and emotional blinders and so on. Cognitive, just in simple words, is just my mind. So mental blinders and, and, uh, and, uh, and so on. Uh, reflect on that, please. Uh, discounting advice. Uh, one seekers have advice in hand their most common mistake is to undervalue or dismiss it and this happens many times this is a strong recurrent finding in organizational behavior research yeah um, you take that listen to that advice and then you just discount it for some reason which maybe is not it's, it makes sense to you but if you think about it deeply it is because of the flawed logic which we which we which we can have. For example, you can you can maybe think that someone gives you advice and you say, oh, the, that person don't understand our, cult, our culture. Yes, they don't understand the culture, but they understand maybe the problem. And in that type of problem, maybe similar type of things happen across cultures. 
because people are people cultures are different but there are some things which are common across cultures and if that were not true then uh, there would be no international brands we have many international brands working in jamaica like kfc what is that it's it's the taste the texture the offerings the they are you can say that they are different in different markets but they they kfc was or is able to find some similarities across cultures that is why they are acceptable across cultures but you just discounted someone's uh, advice or knowledge because they don't understand your culture yes they don't maybe understand your culture but maybe they understand the problem they, they understand the similar type of problems in their in in similar type of issues yes um, but best would be that the person also understand your culture it would be like uh, like a better thing that they also understand culture and they also understand you your personality also they understand but to find such a good fit in the advisor that is that is not is not easy it's not easy so um, think about that misjudging the quality of advice that also happen many times most seekers who accept uh, advice have trouble distinguishing the good from bad yeah and i have made some comments on that looking at advice from friends uh, um, advice from uh, family and this uh, want you to pay attention to this please research shows that they value advice more if it comes from a confident source yeah so if you are confident on someone you have confidence in someone you are more likely to take their advice even though even though confidence does not single validity you can you can you can have full confidence on someone at work and you are okay to take their advice but that does not guarantee that their advice is valid but see this is the this is the this is the problem with the we think that our brain brains work fine but brain is a very strange thing it is brain is going to tell you that you have what is if you are not going to take the advice then you you don't con have confidence in the person no confidence is separate thing taking advice and working on the advice is different thing having good relationship with someone having friendship with someone is separate thing don't confuse that a friend is also going to give you a good advice it might happen it might not happen for various reasons but we don't think like that and also if if a friend say something give us advice and we don't do it our friend will also not understand our friend will say oh you did not do what i told you to told told you to do as like I, i am i am like giving you my advice on how to look at this article yeah so you might not take it and i should not worry about that that is not my job or i should not be concerned that you are taking it my advice or not my role is to give you advice and your role is to distinguish between good advice and bad advice If, without without getting influenced by my exposure to international markets without being influenced by my personality voice or anything which you might be getting influenced from and all of us get influenced from other people yeah so it is not that you are not getting influenced you would have some type of influence on from the things which i am saying so the idea is that so this is this is the difficult part that is why it is so so you like obama honorable obama i love his speaking style i would listen to when he would come on on the, to speak something and no links with us i'm just praying more what is happening but i would just listen to how he's he's talking and then if you if it is a charismatic leader it is very easy to uh, get influenced in the way that whatever he's saying it is correct because you like the speaking style and you so but but that does not mean your you you 
you eat it. And we also do it in our daily lives. Like we look at a beautiful face and we start feeling that, oh, this person is, is very nice. Uh, we start liking the person without talking. Just by, we just saw the person. We don't know anything about the person. I'm sure you you have experienced this. Yeah. So, but <laughs> that is flaw, flawed cognitive bias. You like the look of the person. That is what you should say. You say, I like the hair. I like the skin tone. I like the whatever you like, right? whatever you like. Yeah. But it's not that does not tell you if the person is nice or not. But any beautiful person you see, any good looking, handsome person you see, you are also going to start thinking that the person is nice. Look, look in your life. If, 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 if you don't agree, you should let me know. So I understand what do you think about that. The way I'm looking at it, you see at a face and without even talking to them, you start thinking that person must be nice. And that is maybe not true when you find out later when you to start talking and maybe many times you say well this person is just a normal person i was just infatuated or something like that yeah the same thing happens with advice you are influenced by some people friends mentors lecturers whoever it is whoever you get some leadership and you whatever they say you say oh this is yeah. So if this is happening to you right now, like whatever I'm saying, you are saying, OK, it makes sense. It makes sense. It makes sense. Then this is not a good sign. You should think it on your own without me in the picture. I have said what I have said. You make notes then you go on your own way and then you think about these things on your own without getting influenced with from me. You think, take points, write them down and then think about them and then you decide based on your experiences and then you take feedback from other people but we generally don't do it like that that is why we make many mistakes in our life that is why that is a one major reason we get influenced and without knowing we are getting influenced yeah so these things are something to really think about uh, some other things um, 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 like overstepping boundaries, you can read about that. Uh, misdiagnosing the problem. Um, I said a couple of things on on that, but there is some section which I really enjoyed le reading, so I'm going to highlight that one. Uh, seekers are self-interested parties who may deliberately or not present partial or biased accounts. Taking such accounts at face value leads to inaccurate assessments and flawed advice. You have to be really, you have to really spend time with yourself, understand your personality. Like we spend time with others all the time. We don't spend, generally people don't spend time with themselves, trying to know their liking, disliking, how they react in different situations. Uh, what they want to do in their life, how they should go about it. Um, they influenced by the environment. And that is why uh, I mentioned it to Jod uh, before we started recording that get involved with like minded people who have similar ambitions, then it will be easier for you to go on that path of finding what are the opportunities in overseas markets? Because whenever you guys will meet, you will talk about this thing naturally because everyone is interested in that. So wherever you want to go uh, in life and you want advice on that, it's very strong to do that. You have like minded people because they are going to influence you. Uh, no matter how hard you try that, no one influences you. It is we are human beings. We get influenced. <laughs> We do, but good thing is that you understand that you are getting influenced and then you step back a little bit and think about the thing. Yeah, that is what you know, you can you can get. Of course, if someone is knowledgeable on the on, in the field, the person who did research on this advising and all these things, we are reading his article. I read this article multiple times. I am decided to share this article. Of course, I like the article. That is why I, I, I select it. Of course, whatever he is saying, I am taking weightage to him more than how what I think about the things. 
because he is authority on this field. So he is expert. He has spent time. He has done many interviews. So all of those things are there. But will I do things the way he has said to the T exactly? No. I will. I, that and that does not mean that I disagree with what he is saying. No, what he is saying is correct. I am no dis. I am not in a position to disagree with him. He is a top scholar in the field. Yeah. So I respect his knowledge and everything. But I am going to take from his knowledge what fits, what advice fits in my life, and then I am going to take ownership of that. If it fails, it is my fault. If it's successful, it is everyone's. Uh, I will give credit to everyone. Uh, there, advisors tend to avoid asking. This is very, is very interesting and important. Asking basic, probing questions because they don't want to jeopardize their expert status. So they won't ask those questions because think about it. If you ask me some type of probing questions here, and uh, then you might not want to ask those in the in front of your other people. Because then other people will judge you that, oh, you don't understand this. Oh, you don't understand. That is why people don't ask questions in the lectures. How often you have seen someone asking questions openly? Very rarely you will see people asking questions. And even if someone asks one question, do they ask a follow up question? And then do they ask a follow up question? No, very rarely those type of people are going to be there. Very rarely. Why is that? Is it that they have no questions in their head? No, they have questions. Right now, it is very possible that there are questions in your head, but you are not asking them for some reason because you are like maybe being judged or maybe some other reservations you have. Yeah. So that is very interesting point to uh, think about. Um, this one, this line is very interesting. Offering self-centered guidance. Advisors often frame their guidance as how I would respond if I were in your shoes. And you must have have heard this from your friends families that okay you are doing this if I were you I would do it like this and if you realize when Jode was asking me some things I wish we would have recorded that also because that was a very interesting interesting conversation so I told Jode that if I were you I would do it like this but that is wrong way to go about this but I naturally did it because this is how what human beings do. And that is what what is the problem with that advice? Because it is not I who is going to make the decisions which Jode is going to make about going in international market and studying in overseas market and so on. It is not I. It is Jode. So I need to first understand Jode that Jode, why you are into all of this? And she did tell me a couple of things that she would want exposure and it would be more fun. And I think those type of things she mentioned in, in her. But the un, un, uh, underlying sentiment, I understand that for better ex exposure, better experience, she wanted to go or she want to go in international market. But I just told her that if I were you, I would do it like this. Is that good advice? Yeah. Looking at the research, maybe that is not the best way to advise. You need to understand first Jode what she wants to do and why she wants to do and what is happening and then give a response to Jode which would fit in her personality. But then that is pretty hard for someone else to do. That is why the person who is taking advice, they need to think about these things, but they don't. Why? Because it is very time consuming. We want quick, quick fixes. We want someone else to we, we just want some, to tell our problem to someone, our friends, families, whoever it is, and we want an answer for that, that, okay, this is the problem, you solve it. And they tell us, and then we do it like that. That's not how it is going to happen. And that's, not the, that's not the best way of taking or going forward with the advice. Yeah, communicating advice poorly. Yes, that is again. You, it can be best idea, but if it is not communicating, uh, communicated uh, in the right way, then it can be problematic. Nothing causes paralysis like a laundry list of options with no explicit guidance on where to start or how to work through. And we know the list. Yeah, so you are giving too many options to uh, to other people. They are. It can be confusing.
but then you know the more knowledge you have you can give options because that is what i did with jord i said you can do this you can do this you can do this i told two three four things and then you can check in the chat he said that yes i will do both and i said you should do all other things but then what is that it is list of options and according to the research it, it gives kind of paralysis yeah when on the other hand let me show you the irony of of the of the research look at this i'm take, picking up another point look at this it is much better to ask questions that allow people to reach conclusions for themselves if they if they do they will feel much more confident in the process and choices and the choices they make so when some friends ask you that what should i do refrain from telling them what they should do ask them some questions yeah ask them some probing questions to understand themselves yeah so for example a friend asks should i go to that party or no a simple question should i go to that party or no so instead of saying yes or no you can ask what will what will happen if you go and what will happen if you don't go and the friend says if i go this will happen and if i don't go this this will happen and you pick up the conversation from there and let the friend decide what they would really want to do you should be a help to the friend not just dictating that yes or no if you are doing it like that then there will a time when your friend will be able to decide things on their own because you have taught them how to think about these things they won't necessarily need you uh need to ask you every time should i go there or should i you too much dependent or family or whatever it is so you are teaching them the skill that is true friendship yeah but then the friend can if you ask them that you know it it can go anyway if you are the friend asks should i go to the party or not and you say well what will happen if and what will happen you don't go and then the friend can say well you, uh, give me a simple answer should i go or not what are you like now you are asking me if i don't know what will happen if that is that is the problem let's see so it's it's a challenge it's it's definitely a challenge so i hope you are looking at the at the uh, contradictions and so on and i would like when we look at stage 3 of this uh, you would uh, want to um, think about that your class time is over if you want to leave please uh, feel free to leave and you can check the recording whenever you want uh, if you want to go i have no problem with that please go and i will see you next week but anyways i am going to continue this and i would like to finish this article which might finish in 15 to 20 minutes or something like that so you can decide what you want to do after where was i okay this is yeah i was talking about it. mishandling the mishandling the aftermath and that is what i was referring to like after you have given the advice what is going to happen that is again very interesting thing to think about let's take some pointers from this section uh though the final decision is not theirs to make many advisors take offense when their guidance is not accepted wholesale yeah so you have given some advice and the other person is not taking it uh, fully like as you are told you get upset and that is very common but a good advisor is not going to be to be upset why why there is a reason for upset but you can ask the person that what why did you decide whatever you decide and then you can pick from there that if there is any flaw in logic you can highlight but yeah is uh, should not worry if the advice was taken or not but but very easy to say as i am talking but as i reflect in my own life um uh, when i like i can tell you personally that when i give someone advice and they don't take it it's not something which i enjoy of course it's not like it would be good if they would, would have taken it i would feel better that they took my advice um but they know themselves uh better they know themselves better so uh um, if they are deciding on something which maybe i did not really really say then um um 
should not be a big problem for me. The reality is that recipients rarely take one person's advice and run with that with it. Uh, more often they modify the advice, combine it with feedback from others or reject it all together. So they are taking many advice. When you will be taking advice from me, you will be advised by other people also. So then uh, advisors often fail to treat these responsive responses as valuable inputs in an ongoing conversation. So it is the idea is more about ongoing conversation than uh, than just taking the advice and working on it because uh, even the best advice is just good in that time, in that in that time period, in that circumstances. As the circumstances uh, change, uh, then the it's not necessary that that advice is also uh, going to be uh, suitable for that. Even the best advice can quickly become irrelevant. It is it is many times it is. It is about uh, the timing and the context and so on. The article gives a lot of examples from the American context. You are going to look at in that in your own time. I'm just going to go through these guidelines for each stage of advice. There are five stages. And with that, I would uh, plan to conclude uh, whatever uh, I have to. I have to say yes, no problem with that. OK, so guidelines for each stage of advising. Uh, there are five stages. Stage number one, finding the right fit. Yeah, these are guidelines for each stage of advising. So in that we are going to look both. One is seeker and one is advisor. Seeker is the person who is taking the advice. Yeah, the so first stage, finding the right fit. So if you are seeker, have a pre-existing board of diverse complementary advisors. So it is not suggested that you just have one advice, advisor. You have multiple advisors, just like a board, uh, board members, just like, uh, just like an international business is run. There is a board of uh, people and they give you advice on different things. It is not just one person. So. That is what one thing which you should think about. Determ determine what type of advice you are seeking. Like, is it you want to get validated? <laughs> or you genuinely need some type of advice uh, there? What is the, What are the things you are trying to do? Choose one or more advisors who fit your current needs. And by current needs, we mean that the advisor which you will choose today is not it's possible that the same advisor is not fit as the circumstances change. On the other hand, if you are an advisor, assess the fit. Do you have the time, expertise, and experience to help? Yeah, so time, expertise, experience. Also, I would add patience. You have patience to you know, ask the right questions which will help the seeker to reach to their own conclusions. Do you have that? Identify other potential sources of guidance. Uh, yeah, so just like when I was giving some pointers to Jord, I did not just limit to what I was saying. I, I highlighted many other parties on campus, doctors, medical doctors. I highlighted faculty, go to faculty, go to uh, international students office near bursary on Mona campus. So different places, I, I so different potential source of guidance. I, I mentioned international uh, universities where she would want to go. So it's not that is that is the role of advisor. Advisor's role is not just to advise and okay do it like this. You should do it like that. No, that's not the role of advisor. It's open up, make the person think about the same situation in a different way. That is the role of advisor. That is the role of facilitating class facilitator, like I'm facilitating the session for you guys. Uh, just making you think on these things and then over a period of time, you will make your own stages and you will have your own steps as a seeker and advisor. These are just you know some guidelines. So let's look at the second stage. Developing a shared understanding. If you are a seeker, provide just enough information about your problem. Acknowledge uncomfortable truths. 
yeah tell the advisor about your own personality like things you are not very open to you know uh, confess to other people like you everyone has some personality issue whatever you want to call them but tell them some of the uncomfortable truths like you become nervous very easily you become angry very easily in that situation uh, you are emotionally unstable how do i become more 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 uh, stable emotionally um, um, what to do in this type of situation because i get nervous uh, all of those type of things so those are uncomfortable truths you are sharing that and if you are an advisor set the stage for effective advising allow allow ample time if you don't have time then you don't you can't have good advising because again advising is not it's not just like you go to the uh, go to the advisor and they tell you and you just do that you can do that also but uh, and sometimes it can it can work also but then the problem is that if it does not work who is to blame um, that is a big problem so that is why it requires ample time so you develop some type of ownership on whatever you have decided based on the advice given and choose a place that is free from distractions and ensure uh, privacy listen actively and suspend judgment and see how hard it is to suspend judgment and that is what i the, either you are seeker or you are advisor or you are you have nothing to do with advising or taking advice whenever you are taking anyone's opinion you are in international business management or not if you are in international business management you will be taking other people's opinion on that as they are speaking don't judge what they are saying try to suspend just you will judge but suspend it judge it later and you are in your own private space make the notes and think about it at what portion makes sense don't just you know generally we have like we uh, whenever a new opinion is given new opinion which we are not comfortable with what happens is we just quickly discard it quickly without without thinking about it that what is happening here we would quickly disregard it just like that why because we are not comfortable with that it is new thing for us that makes us you know we judge it and we say it will not work here that is that generally human beings do that across cultures people do that so suspend judgment for a for a little while ask open ended question to broaden understanding and then shift to more detailed probes of course it will be time consuming oh, once you have a complete picture of the problem agree on what type of advice is needed yeah that agreement is necessary what type of advice you want you want some advice which will help you grow more you want some type of advice which will ju just help you manage this situation right now and not for a long long longer period of time you just looking at short term or you are looking long term or what you want to achieve what are the like uh, the parties involved and all of those things what type of advice is needed uh, that is very important third stage uh, from the five stages would be crafting alternatives if you are a seeker contribute actively to the development of the options so as the advisor is telling you that you can do this you can do this you can do this in the same period you are also advising yourself and you share that with your advisor you say okay can i do this also can i do this also can i do this also what do you think about this and both are advising you you yourself are advising yourself and the advisor is advising you it's you have to contribute actively to the development of options because advisor is just going to give you some some things there you, they need to work in your circumstances so you are the owner of that so that is called development of option ask questions to understand you ask questions from advisor what what is that what is yeah see if you if you are here jode was asking very interesting questions how she opened the floor for me to share my thoughts before we started recording yeah so what was that ask questions to understand and this is very impo important thing ask questions to understand not to like do something else not to make a point that you are smarter <laughs> or you know better 
or for sarcasm or something like that. Don't do it. Many times we do it for that also. So ask questions to understand what what understand what the costs, the benefits, rational for each option. Yeah. Just like I gave you example, friend asked you, should I should I should I go to the to the party? And you are asking simple cost benefit. What will happen if you go? What will happen if you don't go? We are looking at both options. Maybe you know already that friend should not go there because maybe the friend is the ex is there and friend will look at the ex and then it was not a good experience and then they will go back again and then all the problems. So they should not go. But you don't say that to the friend. You make them think that. You ask them what is what would happen if you go. What would happen? It would it would not go. You make them the owner of the of the decision the relevance and applicability of the advice how much relevant it is you want to go in international market you want to uh, put a new product in the for example let's say germany you are from jamaica to germany yeah many they, they like Jama jamaican things a lot just like any other european country and jamaica might be a small country on the map but it is very big uh, in the in the in the mind the way foreigners uh, look at Jamaica yeah so uh, your advisor would maybe tell you a couple of you know products what what but you would have to now think the relevance and applicability uh, of those products in the international market yeah the approach to implementation that is very important advice is just advice but how are you going to execute it that is execution is a big factor very big factor in any advice uh, and uh, it's same two people can be given the uh, like the, your your coursework it is it is like the advice is given on the course outline on or really advice is given do it like this do it like this you can do this these are the main things and many things i have asked you to decide on your own looking at the um, stake involved involved which is your marks 25 for one 15 for one how you would want to how much effort you're going to put for 15 marks how much effort you are going to put on 25 marks all of that is implementation who is implementing it i'm not implementing it you are implementing it it might seem that i i implemented it but i am just giving you guidelines you are the one how you are going to implement that in the form of a journal and in the form of video or whatever you have to do yeah so that everyone is going to do the same thing no the 70 people in the session everyone will implement it diff differently the approaches if you are an advisor understand and articulate articulate your role as providing guidance not making the decisions whenever someone asks you any type of advice you make it clear that my role is to provide guidance I will share my experiences with you, what I went through, what were my challenges, how I solved them in the international market. Just like Jod asked me the question. Yeah, I think I said it before, but if I did not, I will just repeat quickly that she asked me that you go in international markets. How do you prepare before going there about the culture and so on and so forth? Yeah. Um, so I, I if you remember, I mentioned that this is what I do. This is what I do. This is what I do. And then she came back again and then he said, I understand that. But then she asked a follow up question on that. So what I was trying to do that I was very open and willing to share my knowledge with her. But I cannot make the decision for her. Now she might not like it. She might say, oh, I, you tell me what to do. I don't know what to do. But that is not good advice. That is not good advice because I don't know your personality. I don't know how you react to different situations. I can share my journey with you. And then from there you see what or we can learn more about each other over a period of time. And then maybe I will be able to tell you something or you will be able to tell me something over a period of time. Uh, and so on. We learn from each other because you are learning from the advisor advisor is also learning from you because the advisor is learning about different type of challenges which you are facing 
and that is a very big knowledge for the advisor because whenever that advisor would be in a similar situation with a similar type of problem next time their understanding or their uh, advice or feedback would be superior because they would have had one experience of a similar kind and they would have had seen how uh, which advice worked in your context and which advice did not work so they will be advisor will be able to tell that story also of course without taking any names uh, just telling the situation how it evolved and so on push to generate several viable options that's very interesting push to generate several viable option that this is viable this is viable this is viable as an advisor yeah but then as we were looking at a while ago that it can it can uh, put uh, some type of uh, um, some type of uh, uh, let's let's go back and look at the look at um, um, look at the exact words uh, which were here yeah nothing causes paralysis like a laundry list of options with no explicit guidance on where to start or how to work through and we know the list so on one hand the authors are saying that it is going to paralyze when there are list of options but then on the other hand on the very other hand they are saying that push to generate several viable choices and this is the dilemma which you want to cater in the advising looking at the situation and the personality of the people you are giving some type of suggestion spell out the rational and personal experiences and principles behind your advice and i think i have made that very clear that uh, just like in the example that you know i could share my experience and then you as as the person decide we are going to look at these two last stages before we conclude converging on a decision uh, stage number four if you are a seeker beware of uncritical and dis dismissive reflexes consider soliciting a second or third opinion that would be that would be interesting who you ask take second and third opinion just be mindful about those examples that friends yes family yes they have your best interest in heart uh, but think about it your do you do you really think that your family and friends really understand you do you really think that they understand you it might look apparently that they do understand you but they don't uh, do you understand them uh, it might look that you understand them but you don't uh, and like for example uh, bill gates honorable bill gates what happened to their marriage just few days ago i think i think uh, it did not work out and how many years of married life they have like years like 30 years or like a lot of years don't quote me on that so what they knew what happened what why why things did not work out something happened so maybe bill gates did few things honorable bill gates and he's very smart man he's one of the smartest mind in the world <laughs> one of the richest man in the world also in top five or top ten definitely he has made many things in his in his life uh, but so that 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 would mean that his all of his advice will be good for you also if bill gates comes and he advise you and you should take all the things which he's saying he's very smart you should but you should not because you should not get influenced that bill gates is saying that you should listen to him and respect i'm not saying that don't respect bill gates or anyone like in authority you respect them but think about don't even don't what i'm trying to say is that don't even just listen to yourself also forget about bill gates or anyone else even if your mind tells you to do something you sit down and you go within and you say why my mind is telling me to do this what is the reason why you also question yourself um, and uh, you will be within days you will start seeing good benefit of this exercise 
but definitely in in weeks definitely i said days but just to be careful in weeks you will start seeing the benefits when you are questioning things and and uh, and don't worry if the answers don't come right away develop hybrid solutions very good if you are advisor ensure that all the options are evaluated don't jump too quickly to a solution pause frequently for reactions i think this is very important pause frequently don't just jump to the conclusion don't just people ask your advice you just start giving them right away no that's not a good idea listen to them more and understand the situation more and uh, pause and then give give your reaction and think about things before you say them convey your availability for further clarification and elaboration and this point is so close to my heart because this tells us that advice is not something where you have given it and then you are on your way and the seeker is on their way no it is it's it's you have to touch base again that okay we were talking about this last time how it went what happened there and then they will say okay this happened and then you will reevaluate and revisit so this this is a long long process especially in international business ma business management because it will never be a case where someone has given you advice in international business management and that is the final word no it will not happen because market is dynamic more and more new things will be happen let's quickly look at the final stage before we conclude uh, stage five putting advice into action if you are you are a seeker be sensitive to changes in the situation or context and and any need for mid course correction my god this is this is so important uh, so important be sensitive to changes in the situation uh, we spend time on thinking about something then we finalize that this is how we are going to do and then we are just continuing on that we realizing that situation situations are changing things are changing context is changing and then many times uh, we are very like you know like not not comfortable in making any changes mid course uh, any need for mid course correction we are very shy to make any corrections because we have made a decision and we say okay this is the right decision and even we are getting some red flags or something like that we say oh what will happen if this will happen what will happen if how people will look at my credibility that he decided to do this but then he changed course all of those things are it's very difficult to do this in the in reality but you should be mindful of that if uh, uh, the decisions are not forever what decision i made today is for for now in this moment in this time period tomorrow i might not make the same decision again even if the context is same because tomorrow other things will change maybe context will same but maybe personalities of people will change yeah, so that is a big mistake which people make because i have seen many times that people have made a decision and then they even when they want to make some correction they cannot because the society and the atmosphere and in the context of international business management so many stakes are involved because you are international business if you will withdraw from the market for whatever the reason or you will delay the launch of your international product in some international market then your uh, your competition is going to start talking about it yeah, they will start saying why this happened Was, rumors will start and all of those things so you have to think about that follow up and seek additional guidance if necessary yeah that's very interesting and finally if you are an advisor reaffirm that the decision and the consequence are of the seekers the decisions and the consequence yeah but many times um, the seekers don't like it and for obvious reasons they uh they they want some uh, they don't want to work on anything generally speaking they want that okay you are the expert you tell us what to do uh and advisor can of course tell it's not that advisor cannot tell the advisor can definitely tell but then uh that advice might not be very strong as you are thinking because advisor gave advice 
from their lens you are seeker you are you are the person who is advised so you know yourself and you need to think about all the things which i have been mentioning i don't want to repeat the same things one more time convey your availability for additional guidance and support so this was in number stage 4 also and 5 also and this will continue and let's look at the final final section of the last paragraph of the of the article because they were trying to make uh, conclusions uh, there so we will we will end in next next minute or so so um, here it is uh, very interesting conclusions how they advise as to what they advise both things important how the advice is given and what are many times what is considered that what should be the advice given not how yeah so for how it would be that you just don't just jump to the conclusion uh, take your time and ask probing probing questions and let the seeker decide based on those uh, uh, things you have mentioned uh, let's look at this skilled advising is more than the dispensing and accepting of wisdom please get it clear if it is just the person is telling you what to do and you just accept it as some wise words that's not skilled advising and you are not making the seeker stand on their own as i gave earlier example it is a creative collaborative process a matter of striving on both sides both sides to better understand problems and craft a promising path forward and that often requires an ongoing conversation yeah so be mindful of uh, these things because uh, no matter you decide to uh, go in uh, unknown territories like uh, international businesses or you decide to do anything in life many times you will you will see that uh, uh, you will need opinion from uh, from other people many times so uh, these were some things which you should maybe keep in mind when you are uh, taking opinions and uh, of course nothing is final all the things said in the article all the things i said they are not the final words uh, the authors shared their point of view i shared my point of view you need to decide how to give advice and how to take advice thanks very